All right, welcome back to Decrypted Tech and our continuing coverage of Gigabyte's Z77X-UD5H Wi-Fi Edition motherboard. Uh, we've already shown you, uh, again, if you click on the link below, you'll see some of the performance that we've got uh, that, that this board showed us. But we're going to take a look at some of the software and utilities that actually come with the board that give it that extra, those extra features that make it worth uh, picking up, you know, if you're out looking for a Z77 motherboard. When you saw our design and feature review, we covered a lot of the new things that they're putting into this, especially the uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi cart. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are going to become much more important inside the house in that many of these companies are moving towards setting up your computer as an internally, like a private cloud. So you'll be able to share media, bounce it off. You've seen some of that in the ASUS uh, reviews that we have. And a lot of these are moving towards that. You'll have things like your cloud station, which is a gigabyte unique feature. You have, uh, you know, Cloud OC, which isn't necessarily a unique feature, but it's becoming more and more common in your upper, uh, you know, upper end motherboards. You can sit there with a tablet or with a phone, and you can actually interact with your PC and go ahead and overclock it from there. It's a neat function. Um, honestly, from our standpoint, we are still kind of old school. We like to get into the BIOS and click around and do what we need to do to, to get things OC there. But the Cloud OC is kind of a, a fun feature to play around with. So let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to take a look at EasyTune 6 first. So we'll go ahead and get down here and we'll get it started. Okay, and now we got it up on the screen. Now, unlike some of the other boards um, that we've seen where the older overclocking software doesn't necessarily fit in place with the newer motherboards, with the UD5H uh, Wi-Fi Edition, the Z77, uh, everything actually works. Uh, as we saw under the UD3, we didn't have the uh, most of these, uh, the quick boost buttons, they were just zeroed out, as well as the CPU speed was zeroed out. That was an issue with it, talking to between the BIOS and the, and the software. Everything is here. This is the screen you hit by default when you open this up. We've already run the auto-tuning. Again, if you look at our overclocking section, you'll see that. Um, we just have the, you know, what we got with our overtune, which is 4.81801 gigahertz. It was stable, but we didn't see any kind of a performance benefit running it. So we went ahead and bounced it back to our normal overclock. We were not able to get over our normal 4.8. When we hit 4.9, we had sort of a semi-stability, but we couldn't get all of our tests to run properly on it. And again, we started seeing temperatures that were just getting a little too high for our comfort. So we did back it down to 4.8 gigahertz and it was able to run everything. So that was pretty nice to see. So we're getting the same overclock we're seeing out of all of it. This is more of a CPU limitation than a motherboard limitation at this point, as well as a cooling limitation. As we improve our cooling systems that we have inside here, we're sure that we'll be able to hit a much higher clock, as well as, uh, you know, we have some plans in the future to pick up another 3770K and deshell it, and we'll see if that will allow us to get a little bit higher with some direct die cooling or even with some, uh, by changing the thermal interface material in there. We've still got to tinker around with that. We know there's been a lot of information passed back and forth about that. That's something we do have planned. But let's just go ahead and stick with EasyTune 6 for now. Right, the first page, as we've told you before, this is a CPU-Z style page. You don't have any options to validate here, but it's going to tell you that almost the same things that you would see in a normal CPU-Z page. So you can see everything here. You see our overclock is 4.8. It's going to bounce a little bit around as the turbo mode kicks in and out. Um, you do have a memory setting. It's going to show you what your memory is doing. Of course, here is the tuner that we talked about. You have your auto-tuning option. You click on this, it's going to run through some auto-tuning, and, and it'll run through several stages where it'll reboot, test the stability, reboot, test the stability. On this one, unlike what we saw with the UD3H, this one completed properly. It didn't lock up and continue to try and restart every time we booted up the board. So this was much better. We think it just has to do with the software and the way it was talking with the BIOS. All right, well, if you're not interested in quick boost, you do have an easy mode. And you can see here that the only thing you have as far as an option is your frequency. You can change your B clock here, 104, 105. You can bounce this back and forth um, to get it higher or lower. So, and then of course you don't have ratio or voltage here. You don't get those until you actually click on advance. And at that point you have your memory that you can take around with, your ratios, all of those can be adjusted and your voltage can be adjusted directly here. So that covers those. Um, right now, even though we do have an HD5870 in the system, the graphics option is not available. It's just not picking up our GPU and running it the way it's supposed to. So we're not able to show you the overclocking potential that you have there that you should get with most um, video cards. All right, as you can see here, this is going to be your smart fan options. You can take a look. You can disable this. Uh, you have advanced settings. 
They're going to allow you to change different functions. You also can mess with the system fan. These are the two fans that are that you can tinker with. You have CPU and system fan. Um, those are going to be your only two options in this software at this time. We know that Gigabyte has talked about expanding this out to other portions of the board just so you can maintain better control over all of the different fans. And then of course the last page is going to be uh, your voltage and temperature monitoring. These you can set up your different thresholds for alarms, all of that, and this is going to show you your voltage consistency across the board. It's a nice software, don't get me wrong, however it's very limited in its scope compared to what you can actually do with these motherboards and when you compare them to other offerings from let's say ASUS, ASRock, or even other companies. They're just expanding this more so the interface is becoming more visual and it's tying in with the BIOS a little bit better. This is a good utility if all you want to do is get in here and overclock your board. It does have a lot of features and functionality. However, we do feel that this software is in desperate need of an update and to move to something a little bit more visual and to include some additional features and functions that make it a better utility and more rounded. Alright, so that covers everything with EasyTune 6 that we wanted to talk about here. We're going to go ahead and fire up a couple of other ones, including some of the ones that relate to audio, and we'll be right back. Alright, so now let's go ahead and let's get some of these open. Um, one of the things we do want to talk about, of course, is the audio enhancements that Gigabyte is throwing into their motherboards. We've looked at a lot of these before, but we've only done it in sort of a graphical mode, where we just post pictures and we, sort of, we try to describe it to you what you get. Um, let's just go ahead and take a look. This is their THX True Studio Pro that's attached to the RealCheck. Um, audio controller that's on this board. And as you can see, you can actually adjust and change, turn on some of the surround sound. You can um, move and manipulate this here to, to sort of in increase the surround sound. This is going to be your center, it's going to give you the best. Uh, moving towards here, as you can see, that's going to give you rear, and this is, of course, moving towards the front. Just depending upon the amount of uh, surround that you have, this is sort of a virtual surround, but it also does work as a mixer for the existing surround that's actually in the software. I um, don't know if you can see that. Let's go ahead and get it zoomed in a little bit here so you can get a better look. Alright, so as you can see, you have your slider here that's going to be work like a fader. And then, of course, you have an option there that just tells you exactly where the center is. It's a very nice feature. All right, moving on to the crystallizer. Crystallizer is a form of an equalizer that's supposed to remove some of the high and low and just give you a better overall um, stepping and separation of your different frequencies and tones that exist inside of an audio stream. Um, we've used these in the past. They can produce some interesting audio artifacts depending upon how capable your audio codec is. Um, if your pro audio processor isn't up to the task, then the crystallizer software can actually produce some glitching or some high frequency spikes as it tries to separate out the individual frequencies to create a more um, definable separation in these frequencies. Okay, of course speaker, this is just going to be pretty much drag the slider to get your different desired levels. So that's going to give you more of an emphasis on the speaker. You have your smart volume. Smart volume is great in that it's going to take and balance out the highs and the lows. Um, if you've ever been watching TV and suddenly a commercial comes on and it is just blaring, that's what this is designed for. Although its more specific intent is more for movies inside where they tend to mix between the highs and the lows and the emphasis of explosions over voice. So you can turn the volume up to get that good voice quality. So you can hear the people actually talking, but it's going to automatically reduce the volume when an explosion comes in that's going to damage your speakers or your ears. Okay, you also have Dialog Plus. This is another one that's supposed to, um, when it's turned on, what it's going to do is allow you to get better, in, uh, sort of a better focus on the dialog that's on the screen or if you're talking with somebody. It's just going to improve the audio quality there. So that covers the THX Pro. There's a couple of other things. Of course, you have your e um, your gadget and your jukebox. Uh, jukebox is just that. It's a way to you know, organize your audio files and mix them around. Uh, this is one of the technologies that they that created put into the first Nomad, which of course later was borrowed by Apple to become the iPod and the iTunes software. Um, so of course these are still here and they're fortunately for us they're funded by Apple with every iPod and every version of iTunes that gets released out there. Okay, so that covers that piece. You also have your creative, your uh, Sound Blaster console. And again with this, they've done, kind of giving you that black, you know, technological look. You can adjust your volume here. It's got the nice uh, brushed aluminum volume. You have your default. It's going to take everything directly back to that. And you have your different settings. Here are your EAX effects. You can change the ambient um, sound envelope that it's produced so that it can mimic different environments. You can see the ones here, Orchestra Pit, Recital Hall, Royal Hall, all of those are available here. 
And of course, you can change the amount of these effects. Um, not my favorite thing to do, but it's kind of it can be fun to play around with. Um, I've done that with several games, such as um, Modern Warfare 3. You know, put it inside of an orchestra hall, so you get that echoing and reverberation effect. That's kind of neat. Um, adds a little bit to it. Of course, you, you have a fully functional equalizer here that allow you to adjust everything from 31 hertz all the way up to 16 kilohertz. Um, that's going to be your broad range. These are your highs, these are your lows. They'll give you your frequency response here. And of course, one kilohertz is going to be your average frequency for voice. So if you want to adjust and kind of spike up some of your voice response, you can take the uh, you know one kilohertz. This is flat. They also have some nice presets, acoustical. Um, flat. Well, that's flat again. New age. You can see how it's going to adjust these things pop. Of course, you have rock, and each one's going to adjust to emphasize a certain frequency range. All right, and then the last one here is going to be your mixer. These are your different volumes and your levels and everything right now. This is based on two-channel. Well, actually, this is your surround mixer here. Everything's up at 100%. And these are your line-in or your microphone for recording. You can adjust these, turn these on and off as you need. And then, of course, you have an option to mute right down here, which is nice. And it gives you just a quick software-based console. Um, a lot of people don't use this, um, but it's still a nice option to have, and it does improve the sound quality even, even for gaming, we've noticed that as we turn this on. And then of course for the last one here we have the Creative Music Server. Again, this allows you to put music in here and play at, you know, you can add and remove different stuff, save it, you can set up all your, uh, repeat your tracks, this is Shuffle, you have all of that. So it's a nice little musical player that's outside of the Windows Music Player or anything else you might throw in here. You can just play whatever you want to do. So, right, so that covers the audio software that we've got here. Now we're going to take a look at something else. It's going to be called, um, let's see, pull it up. You have Wi-Fi sharing. Um, in the Wi-Fi share, this is going to be a software that's going to actually allow you to share this wireless device. Um, right now what we're seeing is we have just the Wi-Fi share option. So let's go ahead and pull up another piece of the program here. Okay, you have a, your mode choices. Yeah, you can run it as a virtual um, router. So in other words, this would actually be your connection to the internet and other people will connect to it wirelessly, which is nice. We're going to go ahead and back out so you can see the, uh, the options here. They're over in the corner. All right, as you can see them over here in the corner, you have a few things you have. Again, you have your manage your Wi-Fi share, which is right here. You can add and remove those. You have your local share directory, your mode choice, which is virtual router mode, Wi-Fi share mode. That's the one that's on right now. And you have your different settings. So this will allow you to set up your virtual router mode or your Wi-Fi share passwords. And of course you have your different connections and this is going to tell you which one it's going to connect to. So this wireless card will allow somebody to connect to it as a wireless device and then route through the onboard Intel Gigabit LAN, which will then of course would be connected to your wireless router or your uh, wired router for access out to the internet. And again, this is what we're talking about as wireless becomes a more important function of motherboards and of products, what you're going to continue to see is you're going to see people set these things up so that they can act as more of a cloud type server. It's just talking about the digital and the connected home that we've been seeing. Microsoft has got a big push for that for Windows 8 which is something we're going to cover in more detail um, with that but motherboard manufacturers are starting to recognize that this is becoming important as people use tablets, Android tablets, as they use iPads, as they use iPhones and Android phones and even Windows mobile phones, um, they're going to go ahead and want to connect these into something to actually utilize it, but nobody wants to, well, most of your consumers don't want to own a Windows server, they don't want to run a server, network attached storage, they feel is expensive, although we have talked about that, it's not as expensive as you really would think. They want a way to connect into this stuff and to use it easily and quickly, that's where this type of technology comes in. We've already seen ASUS's functions and features this builds on that and allows you to create your own private cloud in there. This is Gigabyte's implementation of it. We've seen ASUS's and we know other companies are building these and some people are actually making third-party software that allows you to do this. Um, where we have a review of Synology's network attached storage which also has its own cloud station functions. Now, moving on with the wireless, of course we showed you some of this and, and how it sets up and works. 
There's also something that's actually called a cloud station. So we'll go ahead and get in here and we'll open up the Gigabyte. And when we turn on cloud station, it's automatically going to turn off the EasyTune 6 and the Cloud OC. So then we'll need to go in here and we'll find our cloud station. And what it's going to do is it's going to allow this to operate as, again, a cloud server so that we can connect into it and share and run different functions off of it. Okay, this is going to, it's asking us to get through the, uh, the firewall, which is fine. And now we have our cloud station. So cloud station, you have your live updates about, it's going to tell you what version we've got here. Um, always run on next reboot, you have live update. It's going to go ahead and it will run the update for the cloud station. And like, and again, it's just it's a piece of software that's going to allow you to add some extra functionality into your desktop. As desktops become less and less utilized for content consumption, motherboard manufacturers as well as other companies are going to want to build functionality into existing desktops and into new desktops to allow them to work with tablets and other devices that are used for content consumption. This is going to include your Xboxes and all of that to create sort of a complete home interface. You can still use your desktop for some of your high performance gaming as an addition to your console that might not play those games like you know, play, uh, PlayStation 3 or Xbox might not play a specific game or perhaps you enjoy the keyboard and mouse version of the game. One of those you can operate this here but you can still use this. It doesn't sit idle when you're not gaming. You can use it to store video files, to stream video files, to store files that you may want to work on on your tablet when you're sitting on the couch or wherever you're at. It adds functionality and keeps the motherboard and the PC as a whole relevant. And Gigabyte's, um, you know, got some tools to actually do that. So we've just, you know, we're showing you some of those options and some of the functionality that they put into it. That covers the different software that we've got here. We didn't get too much in depth as far as the performance of some of these, the Cloud Station, the Cloud OC, um, all of those. They work, they're functional. Um, they're not what we, we would call mature yet. Uh, Gigabyte does have some work on this to make them, again, just like they're easy tune, they've got some work to do on the software side just to make it a little bit more relevant for today's customer and to also make it a tool that extends beyond just this basic function of tuning the motherboard and making it run faster. The same thing with the Wi-Fi sharing. It needs to be a little bit more relevant, a little bit more graphical for people to get their, their heads around it. Um, instead of some of this, you can tell it's very basic animation, very basic graphics. And it's not as intuitive, the flow that we see here as, as we've seen with somebody like Azrock, Asus, and a couple of other companies that are putting out products that are designed specifically for this that are not bundled with the motherboard. As always, if you like this video, be sure to uh, click on the like button. Make sure you share it with your friends and be sure to subscribe to us to stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.